Today we share the theme, the altar of witness. That is in Joshua 22:34. Joshua 22:34. ngo nuko abarubeni nabagadi bahimba ico gicaniro edi. Risobanura ngo ni umuhamya wo muri twe yuko witeka ariyoma. The children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar witness for it is a witness between us that the Lord is God. This altar was built after they have overcome the war. It was built by the children of Reuben, the children of God and half of the tribe of Manasseh. I try to share with you the way you give yourself to God when you offer your body to God. The first day we talked about dedication. To dedicate yourself to God. The one who dedicated himself to God has fellowship with God. The following week, we discussed holiness when someone is holy, they draw near to God. The third week, we discuss offering yourself as a sacrifice. And you become a sacrifice. When someone offers themselves as a sacrifice, they have fellowship with God. Today we will share the altar of witness. Which shows people that you have fellowship with God. Sometimes you have fellowship with God in the secret, but sometimes it's necessary for people to know that you have fellowship with God. That's why sometimes the people that's what Jesus said, go and share the gospel and witness to people. It's not enough to fellowship with God in secret only. You must share this with other people. That's why Jesus spent the night praying and he will spend the day among people. He told his disciples, once you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be witnesses. You will start in Jerusalem and do not spend time there. Go to Judea and do not preach the gospel as well. Witness and do not spend too much time there. Continue on to Samaria and you must witness there too. And do not spend too much time there. Continue up to the ends of the earth. Our fellowship with God it must be known by people. It must be known by others. In the sea, you can find a, a big uh, iceberg. It's a big iceberg. It's a big made of ice. When you see it above the waters, you just see the top of the ice. But you don't know how big the iceberg is under the sea. It is very big. You can see it above the waters. But under the water, it is very big and vast. It is the same way a Christian is. Many times we 
Uh, same way with the Christian, they have built a fellowship that is so deep with God. And you see him, God, using the person, but you have no idea how deep and vast is the fellowship. A high building. If they can show you the foundation or how deep the foundation goes, it is very far. It's very far. It is very far. Muri Australia i Sydney Australia Sydney habo munara muremure cyane mu nyanja muri Pacific There is a high tower in the Pacific Ocean Muri bibiri nari mwe 2001 nari Sydney I was in Sydney noneho umuntu twari kumwe anjyana muri uwo munara muremure The person I was we took me to that tower mujya mu ngera hejo and I went up iyo uri muri uwo munara when you are in that tower witegereza umugi wose wa Sydney you can see the whole city of the whole city of Sydney. Ndi bisaba ngo uzenguruke uhagarara hamwe wa munara hejuru gakomeza uzenguruka ukwere ku mugi wose. You don't have to go around the city. The tower turns around and shows you the whole city. No ne ndeba kure cyane mu mazi kure cyane. And I looked far in the Pacific Ocean. Arambira ngo ukomeje kugenda. And he told me if you continue to go. Ukomeje kureba. If you continue to look. Ngo ni mu gihugu cha New Zealand. It is in the country of New Zealand. It is very far. The, my guide in that tower told me this. You have no idea you you have no idea how deep is the foundation for this tower. It goes all the way to the bottom of the ocean. And I asked him, how is that? And he told me that is the ingenuity of Australians. The ingenuity of Australians is seen in that tower and in the opera building. You like to see it's a building that has that looks like it has ears. And he told me under this tower that you are standing, there are chains. They have tied them. And they have brought them, uh, they have tied them to the country of New Zealand. And it has chains that tied that tower all the way to close to New Zealand. And I said to that person, is that so? And he told me it cannot fall. Even if this ocean uh, has trouble. Yes, that's what he was telling me. Even if you have a uh, wind in the in the ocean. The invisible part is stronger than the visible part. That's the same way the people of God are. They are people who are unshakable. Whatever comes to them, they cannot be they cannot fall. If there is that is brought by four things. Those who offer them God, themselves to God, dedicated themselves to God, who have sanctified themselves, who have uh, become the first fruit and the firstborn of God, and they offer their bodies, those people, they are stronger than the tower in Australia. They are built on where the gates of hell cannot shake them. You can see them above and neglect them. <laughs> but they are strong. There was a, a big ship that sunk called the Titanic. It was built by the British. It is very big, strong. As he was coming out of the port of Liverpool towards America, 
Titanic. They asked the architect, tell us how strong is the Titanic. And he told them, even if God tries to destroy it, it cannot be destroyed. That's what he said. I have faith in this. With the wisdom and the ingenuity of beauty. Even God himself cannot destroy it. He was the uh, most luxurious, even more luxurious than the Atlantis ship. That, that goes from uh, that goes from France to Brazil or Miami. It was very strong. He had many levels. Very big, very strong. And the architect had full faith in it. They entered the, the boat or the ship Baraje. and they came Bageze when they were on their way the captain asked for binoculars so that I can see in front of me. They ignored him they, could, they continued to feed people because it was a luxurious ship. They were asking people, what do you drink? What do you want? He had stores and he had different levels. So they were busy serving the clients. Taking care of them. So that when it comes back, uh, people will tell the news. And the captain all asked again for binoculars. And they ignored him again. They will give people expensive whiskeys. They will give them special treats. And when he was looking, he saw a small ice on top of the water. And the uh, ship was going towards that ice. Because he did not have binoculars, he was already close to the ice tip. He was just a small tip above the water. They did not know the power of that ice. And he thought that he would go above it. But it was a big stone of ice underneath. And the ship was going very fast. When they got to it, he hit the ice stone. He was like a mountain under the water. And that's where the Titanic was destroyed. And all people died and the ship was destroyed only nine people survived and one of them just died and he was he remembered when he was nine and he he remained on the isle of the titanic it's underestimated the power of an iceberg. They underestimated that ice tip. Paul said, they take us as weak people. They take us as weak people. They see us as poor people. When we are visible on top, we are visible as weak people. We are visible as lowly people. But we are the ones ruling everything. Yes, Paul 
Jesus said, a city on a high hill cannot be hidden. A Christian, a fellowship with God must go out and be visible. Because people will not judge based on what they don't know. They don't know what is underneath the water. They only see the tip above the water. People do not know you. The fellowship you have with God. They know your works. They know your speech. They know your works. That's where they define you. But they don't know the other hidden things. That's why it's hard to tell someone that they don't pray or do they if they pray because you don't know. The altar of witness. The altar of witness is different from the altar where we offer sacrifices. Going back to the history of this altar, I want to remind you that the children of Reuben and God did not cross over Jordan. They remained on the other side of Canaan. At that time, they were with Moses before he died. And they took the country of Og and Sion. Og belonged to the Amorites and Sion belonged to Goliath. These were giant kings like Goliath. When the Israelites came, these kings uh, stopped them. They were powerful. But the Israelites defeated them. The country of Og, which is the Amorites, and the country of Bashan, he had high mountains and pasture. In that country, for you to get to Canaan, you had to cross the river Jordan. And the children of Reuben told Moses with the uh, God and half of the tribe of Manasseh which belonged to Joseph they said let us remain here we have many flocks and the children of Reuben were very wealthy indeed when they saw how good the country was, they said, let us remain here. Let us remain here. Let us put our flocks in this place. Because we are wealthy. We are rich. We want to stay here. Moses told them, it's impossible. We are all one person. And we are crossing into Canaan. How are you going to remain behind? How will your brothers fight as ten tribes, you remaining behind? And he said, you remind me what happened in Kadesh Barnea. When I sent those men to go and spy the land, ten of them brought the wrong report. Except Caleb and Joshua. At that time, God swore that he's going to kill every man who is 20 years and above. But I entreated God so that he doesn't kill you that day. But in his mind, we started to go around 40 years. It was just one month remaining before we got to the country. It has been only been three months before when they left Egypt. They were supposed to enter Canaan the next day. That's why he sent the men to spy. From that time when they brought the wrong report, we went around the wilderness 40 years so that everyone who came from Egypt would die. 
and those who remain are the 20 years underneath and those who were born in the wilderness. So you are bringing the same thing and you want us to go around for 40 years again. Why do you want to stay here and not cross over? This will cause other people to be fearful and remain behind while they have a good country ahead of them. Do you want to bring the Lord's anger upon Israel again? You want to bring trouble to these people? But they say, You men. And the children of Reuben told him, We swear before God, we leave our wives here, we will, we will leave our children here, and we are going to build a, a places for the flock, sheep flocks. And when we leave, we are going to go in front with our weapons. And the remaining 10 tribes are going to follow us. We are going to go and fight in Canaan. Once we take the nation, yes, with the, our brothers, we will leave them with the country in their possession. And you are going to go back to our country. Moses said, truly, you are going to fight with your brothers. They said, no, we are so not going to fight. fight. We will take our weapons and we will go in front. The children of God were uh, very skilled soldiers. They took their they army, their special forces of Reuben, of God, and half of the Manasseh tribe. And they say, we are going to go ahead of you. We are going to stop after changing Canaan. And every family, every tribe we have their own inheritance. Once we give you your inheritance, then we we'll go back and find our wives and children. But we are a shepherd, so we cannot uh, leave this pasture of Bashan. Moses called Joshua and all the leaders of the tribes. He repeated this to them. Repeat this as well. And he told Joshua these words. Joshua, what they said, if they don't do it, give them an inheritance. But do not give them this inheritance. May, they are going to get an inheritance across the sea. But if they do so, give them this nation that they can come back. They agreed this to this. And Moses died. Time came to cross over the children of Reuben and the children of God and they committed to fulfill what they said. Because the tribe of Manasseh was divided in two. There was one half that agreed to cross over and the other one to remain on the other side. The frontier or the border of, between Canaan and Bashan is the Jordan River. Just to give you an idea. It is a big part of Jordan. So the, uh, the border of Israel and Jordan is the Jordan River. So they remained on the other side of the Jordan River. Or in Jordan. And the other ones were on this side. So the Israelites went. Uh, they were uh, headed by the children of Reuben. They were headed by the children of God. And half of the tribe of Manasseh. They fought. They fought. And they took Canaan. Once they took the land. Joshua found a place between Israel in the middle, in the middle of Israel where they found a place called Shiloh. Shiloh is a place of Israel. Shiloh was the heart, the center of Israel from Beersheba to the country of Dan. 
That place had been given to Ephraim, who is the son of Joseph. No. So they sat in that place after they had taken the whole land. Joshua Rero, Akora Ubufindo. And he started to give people lands, their own possessions. Once they found their inheritance, once every tribe received its own territory, the ten tribes, the reason why I'm talking about ten tribes is half of the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh was given one on the other side and one on this side. Manasseh Yosef. Manasseh was the son of Joseph. He was the firstborn of Joseph. And his following, he was followed by Joseph. Joseph received a double portion. Because their children, his children received the inheritance. Ephraim had his own plan. But Manasseh, Manasseh as the firstborn received a double portion on, the, on both sides of Jordan. Once they divided the whole country, they took the ark of God, the, the, the tent of God, the tabernacle, and they installed it in Shiloh. All the Israelites, they, they would come from their cities and come to Shiloh to worship. Shiloh became the religious center before he was moved to Jerusalem in the time of David. I believe you know this. Shiloh was the first place where they worshipped. Do you know a great man who was born in Shiloh? Christians in the back. Do you know a great man who was born in Shiloh? In the back. Ninde. Who? What's Samuel Muma says that in Shiloh? Ah, Samuel. Samuel. Ndava fash. I just caught you. Eh? Samuel, Samuel, ya Samuel in Shiloh, which we do Hanus. Samuel was received in Shiloh by the prophetic word. Why? His people came from Rama. Rama Tairam. Rama Tairam or in Rama. Rama is a, a, beyond Jerusalem in the country of Benjamin. In the south. They will go from Rama. They will go above the mountains of uh, Ephraim and get to that place. And the Reubenites had and the children of God they were too far away they could not come to worship in Shiloh. That day Joshua called them this is where in, we read in Joshua 22. He called the Reubenites and the Gadites and half of the tribe of Manasseh. And he said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. And have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. You have obeyed. You fought with your brothers. You committed to go ahead and you went. So we, there's nothing we can uh, talk evil about you. And he thanked them. So the time has come. It's time to go and see your wives and your children. It's time to go and see your flocks. Go back into your normal lives. You have fought alongside your brothers. You have fought alongside them. You have fulfilled your promises. You are men. You are men. You fulfill what you promise. You don't say things that you are not going to do. 
you are men. But in on. So, uite kimana yanyu. Yaruhuye bene wanyu kuko yabasezeranije. None ho mwebwe ni mujye mu mahema yanyu. Muzasubire mu gihugu mwahawe. Ico mose umugaragu witeka yabahaye hakujya Yorodan. And now the Lord your God has given you rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now therefore return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of Jordan. Mwitondera mategeko mwo matane nawe mukoreshereza uwiteka imana yanyu imitima yanyu yose nubugingo bwanyu bwose kuko mudafite pasiteri hariye ti mufite abalewi hariye ti mufite ihema ryo kuza gusengera ni mwo bahirize gusa amategeko muzaba bagabo uri mugiye gukidasenga uri mugiye gukitarimo pasiteri uri mugiye gukitarimo mulewe umvira ibyo imana yagutegetse ari byo on verse 5 he gave them a strong commandment but take careful to he, take careful heed to the commandment of the law which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways to keep his commandments to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul the place they were going to they did not have levites or a, any pastor so they had to take extra careful uh, they had to take care to co- obey the commandments just to remind you abalewi the Levites, they did not participate in the lottery to get their land or to have their portion. Mm-mm. No. They told each tribe that received the land take a place, Iwawe. your own place, Uhahe and give it to the Levites. Abalewe aho yagiye gakubaka iyo umulewi yazaga munsi inzu yawe ngo ndubaka waremeraga kuko abalewi bari bemerewe kubaka aho bashaka imana yari yarabahamagariye kubwiriza abisiraeli kubafasha hari nabandi bizaniraga abalewi akamuha ka next ngo uje unyigishiriza abantu ijambo nuko bari babaye ho abalewi so the levites did not have their own land god gave them to the uh, uh, country of israel to teach them some people would even give a place to their levite to teach their ch- children gusa hari midugu ditandatu izwi kwa ari yabalewi but there were six cities that were given to the levites imwe yari kwa yuda one of them was judah iyindi yari yari kwa ifraim some were in judah in the land of iyo midugu tu yakoraga iki what were the cities yari izwi kwa ari yabalewi they were not to be the levites yari territoire gakondo yabo but they were not the inheritance of Imana the levites imana yari yarishizeho God had put those mm. so that when someone kills another person without planning it the law says if they catch him they must kill him but if this person runs and if they run after him and then he gets into the city of the levites the one who was chasing to kill him who have to stop and not enter. That's how God had put If you sin, that you did not plan, and you run to the city of the Levites, it was like HCR, you had immunity. No one would touch you. It's like going to an embassy. Once you commit a sin, or if the country is after you, and you are blessed to get into an embassy of another country, the security that was after you goes back. You know the problem of Julian Assange? Julian Assange, an Australian. He's the owner of WikiLeaks. Do you know him or do you have an idea? Eh? Those who know him raise your okay. hands. Julian Assange is an Australian man. He is a genius. He used his intelligence. Yiba ama information yose yo muri America, yo muri Pentagon 
ayo bohereza ku isi yose imigambe ya America ifite imigambe ishaka gukora America ibyo bavuga na president avugana na 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 ministre wa fer étranger izo bavuga ku bihugu runaka arabyiba arangije kubyiba none akaza bisohora ku makebo abantu bakabisoma iyo niyo bitaga ngo ni leaks ku likinga kwiba ni nka pipe ya amazi none iva we yinjiye mu bayita ngo ni wikileaks ya isogeraga buri cyumweru wikileaks abantu bagasoma america iratangara bashaka ukuntu umuntu yibye ariko of course yakoranaga nabamwe bo muri pentagon hanyuma wiki eh, wikileaks ikwira hose kwisi ndege ngo mushobora kuba mwarabisomye zari ibintu biteye ubwoba cyane amabanga akomeye akomeye ya america yagiye hanze imigambi ifite ibihugu ibyo bashaka gukora gutera kwa Iraq hehe nyano henshi cyane WikiLeaks ya doc yaso ibintu byinshi WikiLeaks was owned by Julian Assange he was able to infiltrate the Pentagon and steal secrets even the conversation of the president with the foreign minister uh, the plans of the nation so it was released every week or every month by Julian Assange Julian Assange rero yisanga ari muri Suede Julian Assange or found himself in Sweden sinzi umukobwa wavuze ngo yamukozeho there was a woman who uh, accused him that he uh, raped her ahungira mu bwongereza and he ran to, in, to England ubwongereza nabo bwaramuhigaga and England was also after him ariruka nkajya muri ambassade ya Equateur Ecuador and he ran to the embassy of Ecuador secretaire yabongereza yagize imyaka ndagira ngo nubu ngo hafi ine icunze gusa ngo nasoka gato bamufate bakarara bahiriwe ti bashobora kwinjira muri ako kazu gatoya ka ambassade ya Equateur the british security officers spent four years outside of that embassy they were not able to enter that small embassy because it was guarded kuko yabaye famous cyane yamenyekanye because he became yeah, very nangaje, famous. I am amazed that you don't know Julian Assange. Anyway, Anyways, it's not our problem. People are filing <laughs> with daily life livelihood livelihood so they don't know the things of Assange. Anyway, <laughs> it's normal. It's normal. A, people, a person only knows his own stuff. We know where the pizza and is. Bought. Bought. And Kuko abana barakubwira buri munsi ngo papa pizza. Uziduka za pizza ho ziba. Because your children always ask you for a pizza, you know where to buy pizza. Anyway. <laughs> Julian Asanje yahagaraga mu idirisha, akunze kwagara mu idirisha ya ambassade noneho akavugana n'abanyamakuru bari hasi inzego z'umutekano zabongerera zihagaze azacyora kumufata agakora press conference Julian Assange will stand in the window of the embassy and have a press conference in front of the security officers who could not arrest him Ari muri yo ambassade as long as he was in that embassy Yaragize nk'imyaka hafi ne ndagenda ngo aracyana ari mu ngubu barimo bagerageza kumukura mu America irasaba ko bamunzana abantu bari bazi ejo bundi Trump ko mbere yuko asohoka azamu azamubabarira ariko nyine nawe yagiye vuba so he spent eh yagiye vuba cyangwa yaratinze yaratinze Julian Assange spent 4 years uh, in that place and people were talking was saying that uh, President Trump was going to pardon him before he leaves office but he left early maybe he left late eh mu minsi shize igihugu cha equateur cyari kivuze ko cyavuze ko gishaka kumwirukana kumukora muri ambassade muri ambassade abahagarariye uburenganzira bwa muntu barahaguruka isi yose ati nti mumukuramo a few a few a few days ago a few weeks ago uh, ecuador decided to take him out of the embassy and the human rights watch movement state that it's impossible icyo navugaga ndi bashobora kwinjira what i was saying is that they cannot enter iyo nzuri mu bwongereza that country is in Ambassade. england the embassy is in england ariko ndi bashobora kwinjira kuko ni kindi gihugu but they cannot enter it because it's a it's another nation nibyo imana yari yakoze muri israel rero that's what god had done in israel ishira mu tudugu dutwa balewi he put cities for levites iyo wahungaga wirutse bakamenya ngo yageze mu balewi ugu ugu kurikirana yasubiraga 
if you ran after you have committed a crime, they would let you go if you entered the city of deliverance. Anyway, that it symbolizes the way uh, people who are going to run into Jesus will be saved of the anger of Satan. So let me go back to my idea. Israel, Israel it had Levites which is Canaan of that time. But across the Jordan River, the children of Reuben and God and the children of Manasseh, they did not have a Levite. They did not have a tabernacle. So who will help them to pray? Who will help them? That was the problem they had. And this is what caused them uh, for Joshua to say these words. God has given rest to your brethren. So go back. This is what I'm asking you. Love your God with all your heart and your soul. May your salvation be a personal salvation. When you don't have a pastor, you don't have a deacon, you don't have a church. Love your God with all your heart. Love him with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went to their tents. And someone asked me, in these European countries, the atmosphere is very heavy. In Africa, it's easy to pray. But when you get to this country, how can someone continue their fellowship with God? No, kuri. It's true. Bira kome. It is strong. It's difficult. Bira kome. It is very difficult. Bira kome. It is possible that it's difficult. This is when your fellowship that you built with God is revealed. The first year when I got to the university, I was 18 years old. I was with other young people whose parents were pastors. One of them, one of them uh, said when we were sitting uh, one night, we don't have our parents here, so let us enjoy ourselves. And the other one said, oh, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. That very day, they made a plan that on Friday they will not stay in the dorms. We had a room where we we'll sleep among around six people. We we'll go and drink. We we'll go and see uh, to uh, see prostitutes. And we are going to meet on Sunday night here. There was a small city in Kisangani called Chopo. Those who lived in Kisangani, you know Chopo. It's a very dangerous place. And there was a small In the town of Mulere, they killed all the men and only women and young women were left. post on the post office. On the post office. Hari chobo kini ni chane. Bari wara chukwe wara vongo. Baza baza temi mitwe ya wano. Amara soya wano. Na chuzura ni chogi baza hagarika. Baza naga waga bibi humbi ni bihumbi. Waka wachi mitwe. Amara soya waka ya mena muri cha chobo. Donke. Iki sangani. Awaga wari wara shize. Hawaga wakoga na wadata. 
at the post office, they had dug a big hole where they would slaughter people. And they had said, we are going to slaughter people until the hole is filled full of blood. So all the men were killed in that city. So the children who, were, uh, who survived, they were raised and they started having children with the women who were left behind in such a way that men were in, uh, missing that city of Tropo there were lines there were lines of women not because they were prostitutes but they would stand before their houses and invite men in their houses so all the young men students of Gisangani were going to that city and the people that we found in the university told us that is the best city and I was amazed the young men went these are the men the young children who sang in the choirs they were baptized and they partook of the holy communion they are children who prayed and spoke in tongues but they said there is no pastor or deacon in this place. Bakay. Very few of them chose not to go to the city. But they faced, uh, they, they were challenged by their friends because they felt like they were not real men. So the person who wrote also said, it is very hard to pray because the atmosphere is very tense. When someone gets to that place, when you don't have a pastor looking at when you, you, when you don't have your mother looking at you, when you don't have your father's look upon you, what do you do? You do it like Daniel who left the Israel and found himself in Babylon which is New York of that time the first thing that you do because there is no Levite because there is no church there is no tabernacle you are in a place of your own where you can do whatever you want the thing that helps you in that time it is to make a commitment in your heart that you not defile yourself though they don't look at you though you are now with the church but you are with God you built an altar of witness within you that testifies to you I'm not looking at the pastor I'm looking at God within me I'm looking at the commandments of God I'm looking at the promises of God the promises that God said about me hallelujah the Christians who are there for visiting they are different with the Christians who have a witness within them. Because a true authentic Christian they become first at work they become a Christian at work on Monday Tuesday, until Sunday in church. Hey! 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 I told you one day I picked up my phone. Fata numero. I took the number. Isanzwe. It was a normal number. Tangira ku telefona abantu. And I started calling people. Baba Kristo uh, Our Christians. Ka telefona nga telefona. I would call and call. Umwe kambwire. One would tell me. Ko hero un telefono urashaka iki? Why are you calling me so many times? What do you want? No ko nge nge yubufasha. I just, and I would say, I just need well, to ask you. And he would say, uh, we are tired of you. And they would hang up on me. 
And I would then call the same person with my personal number. Hello? Hello? Yo! Yes, I see papa. Papa, ura. Are you in the one that Yes, one. You're in papa, ura. They will say, Praise Jesus, Father. Uh, this is a miracle. I, I'm, I'm seeing a vision. Now, I require a room on the room of the room. And then I would say, there is a person who just called earlier, but, and you spoke harshly to oh, him. Yeah, no, and they would say, no, 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 I did, not say to, I did not speak to anybody before. And they would say, um, did you not say that you are tired of this person? And the person would say, I never spoke to someone like that. I would say, brother, sister, don't we have the same word? I said that was, that was me who called you. I'm telling you the truth. Some people left the church and I had to go look for them. Why? Someone can be a Christian in front of so and so and not be a Christian in front of the other person. That is not Christianity that God desires. That is not the fellowship that God is asking for. If not, we can be like other people. Joshua told them, you are going. Continue to love your God with all your heart with all your soul. And take heed to follow all the commandments of Moses. No Levi will come to your place. No tabernacle will come to your place. Because in Israel, there is only one place to worship. You are going into a nation, into a country. You will be in a place that you are not used to live, a place where you are not used to worship, that you worship in a way that you are not used to. Will you continue to pray or will you, will you fall? I was talking about the young men that I went to school with. One day, uh, his, uh, his people sent him money and we were supposed to go pick up the money. And I went with the person. When we, got, when we were on the way, I told them, since your father is a pastor, yes, I did not live with you in the village, but our fathers know each other. Why do you drink alcohol? Why do you go with Why do you go with other women while you have your own wife? I was the only one who was uh, single. I would say yes. If it comes to uh, going to see other women, I am single. It, it will be understandable for me to do it. But why are you doing that having a wife? He told me it's life. It's life. Say, listen. We lived in a place that was like prison, but now God has given us freedom and you can look and get anything you want. I cannot lose I cannot lose this opportunity and he swore by his father's name. And I was hurt. But I loved him. Afterwards, I took him to the place where I used to worship. And he was able to stop those habits. But others uh, were not were impossible. That is not shocking. What you came from your place not 
knowing anything about alcohol, now you are talking about wines. You were used to only drink water and milk. Now you are an expert in winery. You see so now you sit at the table and you ask for wines and you don't know the names you don't know the years of the wines we were called to be like God and we must remain so nigeze gusanga umukobwa umwe muri muri Winnipeg muri Canada nari nagiye kuvuga ubutumwa nari imuzi dusengana noneho nza gusanga yatobaguye amatwi yose yarayamaze yose nkubwira ngo gutobagura amatwi nukuvaho yarashizemo impindu hose nahandi namazuru niki ndamuyoberwa nari imuzi dusengana ari umwana muto yamba yagapira kagera ha umukondo urimwo eh Uri mwindobane buzi ndowane imwe ya indi bakururisha urufi uri mwindobane Okay so I I went to Winnipeg one day and I, I met a girl who used to pray uh, at my church and she had pierced uh, the entire ears and she had a short a small uh, shirt and she was also pierced in her biratanga uh, yara afite inzuma ku ngohe hano inzuma she had uh, like uh, metal earrings or on the, on the eyes and her hands were full of uh, rings and then the person who took me to see her told me there was a girl who used to pray with you and she was in a bar and I asked to be taken to that bar and she was drunk when she saw me, njewe ndamuyoberwa waramenye. Namuyowe kubera izo nzuma yari yiteye. I could not recognize. Mwe muzi ngongoro ya sadutse. Murayize. Muzi ngongoro yamenetse. Bayiteraga ibyuma babyita inzuma. Yarateye inzuma ahantu hose. Iyo ni ngongoro yamenetse mu mwuka. I could not recognize her because she was pierced all over her body. She was able to recognize me however. Very dangerous. When she saw me, she said, Pastor, how did you get here? I said, I'm coming to see you. I, <laughs> even God could not find me and she went out of the bar. That child used to pray. And she was a young woman. That young woman used to pray. And we used to fast together. And I was shocked. How can someone change? There is Christianity in a mass. And there is Christianity on your own. When someone tells you I am saved, ask them, is your salvation a group salvation or is your fellowship intimate with God? Christ, each 
chatu nyava yazizenje we navuzwa nikikuja mukunda hallelujah hallelujah when you are going on the streets of Dallas those who don't know you can then recognize that you are saved when you are working in your own job those who work with you do they know that you are saved when you are talking with other people who don't know you does your speech show that you are saved when someone is saved their speech is unique their address is unique their system are unique Peter tried to deny it but he could not the woman said, look, how can you deny that you don't know Jesus? You speak like him. Another place he went, he said, I don't know Jesus. He said, you walk like Jesus. You dress like Jesus. When he saw that he could not hide, he ran away. A Christian who has been to the cross who has fellowship with Jesus there are signs that show in him that he saved though they may not say so other people will see it oh Jesus we are in a time where our works our speech our works are going to bring people to God or drive people away from, from God praise the Lord once they heard these words the children of Ruben and the children of God they went back with a lot of wealth and Joshua gave this wealth to them. But again, they went after they had crossed the Jordan River which is the border of Canaan. They were in their country of Gilead which is the country of Bashan and the Amorites. They said these things are very serious. They are very serious. We must do something that will cause us not to forget God. Let us build an altar of witness. They took stones, they took gold, and all the things they had. And they built an impressive altar which is impressive. Which is impressive. They raised it high like a, 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 a tower. And they called their women. They called their men. And they said, We have built this altar. We will not sacrifice on it. Because we have no priests. We will not uh, slaughter any animal. Because we have no Levites. But this one, there will come a time when the people of Canaan, our children, who will tell our children, because you're on the other side, our God is not your God. We don't have the same God. You have your God and we have our God. Our children will show them the altar and say our, our fathers built it so that it can become a witness that our God is also your God that your God is also our God whatever happens this altar is going to testify that is why we are building it. we who are still alive we will not break this word we know our, the God who lived with our fathers we know the God who lived with us but the time will come and people will start questioning us this will become an, a witness so they went back home after they have built it 
And in the morning when the children of Israel woke up, the women went to fetch water and they saw a big tower on the border. The name was Witness. Ed. Ed. Ed is Hebrew for witness. The men came and they looked at it and they saw that it was God, Reuben, and Manasses. Yeah. Okay. And they brought the trumpet and all the people ran as like they were going to war. They went to Shiloh. Shiloh was their, like their headquarter. And they said, an abomination has fallen upon us. Our brothers have done the same thing that happened in Peor. In Peor. In Peor. Is when the people are, had, are fornicated with the Moabites. They did the same thing when they built an idol for Aaron. Our brothers are going to pray their own God. So come and let's remove an abomination. All the soldiers came together and they said, let us go and kill the Rubenites. Let us go and kill the Gadites. Let us go and kill the people of Manasseh tomorrow so that God will not be angry at us. Remember what we neglected in the time of Achan and people died. Come and let's kill them. They build their own altar. They are going to pray their own gods. We cannot let this happen. The soldiers got ready to go and attack their brethren. The people who just fought on their behalf, the people who were together with them, we are going to kill them and remove them. The Bible says, Some men said, First, go and investigate and find out what is going on. They took the priest Phineas and ten men who came from the ten tribes. Go to Ruben. Go to God and ask them what happened to them. The Bible says, says they went and the Rubenites the Rubenites received them with joy because they were in another country. They cooked for them. They ate. And they said, we have a message. Tell us what is that altar for? You have no shame. You are going to bring trouble to Israel. They insulted them. After that, the Rubenites explained themselves. They say, it is not so. That altar, we do not offer incense. We do not uh, put a uh, sort of booze. It is just a sign that shows that God is also for us. Because there will be a time when your children will tell our children you live in another country we don't have the same God. And our children will be convinced and they will leave the God of Israel. But we put this here as a witness that shows that the God of the people across the river is the same God for us. And let it be cursed to pray to other gods. It is our own God. It's hard for us to go to another country to worship at Shiloh. But we strengthen ourselves in our God as well as Joshua said. But this altar it is an unwitness within us. Everyone who sees it they know that the God of Israel is also our God. And your old people who see it they will know that we share the same God. Because this this altar, it looks like the altar in Shiloh, it was like a duplicate. The one who saw the one in Shiloh, when they see the one in Gilead, they are the same. 
And they know that the God in Shiloh is the same God in Gilead. Do you have those signs? Those witnesses? Brethren, tell me the music you play in your car. If I go into your car, does it show me as witness or out of witness? Because I cannot know that you are saved, but the songs are here in your car show me that you are saved. The songs, sorry, the songs are here in your car. They show me that you have an altar of witness or that you lost it. When you open your fridge, what I see in it, it showed me that it's an art of witness or you don't have it. When I go into your office, the words I find on the wall, they show me that you have an art of witness or not. What you carry in your hands, it shows me that you have a lot of witness or not. The time has come that you carry something that shows that you are saved. The time has come that you reveal to people that you are saved. Jesus. When you go to parties, what songs do you dance to that show that you have the out of witness or not? When you go, when you go to parties, who do you dance with? Your phone has which altar? WhatsApp is Your WhatsApp has which altar? Internet What altar does your internet have? What is your dressing code showing as your altar? Your friends, whose altar do they belong to? No one else will give you another testimony. They will testify based on what they see in you. Naman told Elisha, You prayed for me and I'm saved. But where I come from, they don't know the God of Israel. Even my father, my, my master, my master, the king, he prays to an idol. And it's amazing. When we, when we go to the temple of that idol, um, among all the great officers of the land, he chose me to lay upon when he's worshipping that God. So but what am I going to do? That's my job. Before Elisha responded, do you know what he said? Bear with me. Bear with me, Elisha. Let me take two kilos of this of this ground and put them on my donkeys. Let me take it home, the land of Israel, that it become a witness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Naman! Naman! Did not carry bananas out of Israel. He did not carry meat out of Israel. He did not go carrying uh, potatoes. He did not take cars. He took the ground where he was healed. Do you know what he did? 
The Bible doesn't talk about it. But if you examine this, took the ground, he went into the temple of the idol and he just put it on the ground. When the king will lay upon him to worship the idol, Naaman will look at the ground which connected him to the God of Israel. There are people who are on earth, but in their own house, they have the land of heaven. They work in the system of the world, but in their job, they have the ground of heaven. Do not think that you are working with so and so because where they step, there is heaven. Listen as I conclude. What will show us that you are saved? What is the testimony or what is the witness? People are afraid of carrying the Bible these days. But other people know. When you meet a Muslim, the first thing they tell you is Salam Aleikum, but you cannot say praise Jesus when you meet someone. I was amazed by two kind of people that I'm going to conclude. When I was in a plane, the first one was a Muslim. When we sat in our seats, he was coming from far. We were going to New York. Noon, uh, at noon, when we were in the plane, he took his carpet and started to pray in the middle of the aisle as we were looking at him. The hostess who were going to feed us or uh, serve us, they waited for him for 10 minutes. But a Christian cannot do it and they will not allow the Christian to do it. Did they deny you to do so? No, Christians are ashamed. They don't know how to live in the things that they have accepted. At 3 p.m., the same guy went to the same place and he put his carpet. Around the flight, he prayed four times. And he said, and the people, the Americans will look at him and they will just go back to reading their own uh, books. And I ask myself, should I do the same thing? But they will think it's a competition. The second people who amazed me is when I was leaving New York going to Tel Aviv in Israel. We were sitting in the plane he was on the next seat beside me. There were two women. There was one sitting in the middle of the aisle, another one at the window, and there was a spot in the middle. On that spot, he was a, a seat for a, a rabbi when he got there and he saw that he was seated among women he told the hostess I cannot sit between two women because my religion does not allow me to do so another thing another thing is even if the, I even if they move, I'm not going to sit with two women. I heard this because I was sitting there. The, the hostess went to tell the captain uh, because the, f the flight, the, uh, the plane was full. There was one spot. 
yagombaga kuza muri business class akaba ari waryamamo igihe cyo kuruhuka uwo mwanya bawubicaje there was a seat a reserve for uh, the co-pilot who was supposed to rest in it they took that seat in the business class and gave it to the rabbi so this is what even shocked me more naratanga i was shocked agiye gusoma bibili when he was going to read his bible naramurungurukaga yari hari i would look at him nagiye kureba cyane namwigiye hutu because i observed him as i learned many things from him ba muhamazi atumiza amazi he called for water arakara bakuri tapi indega yamena kugira ngo abashe gusoma bibili ki and he washed his hands and the water was falling on the carpet of the plane for, for him to read the bible imagine you give me water and, and then i wash my hands with no remorse arangije umugabo ari hadagura nimoshoye neza afata bibili yatangira gusoma and then he he do mirwa nkareba amazi ari hasi nkamwe ngabona no umugabo muzima nzibazaho nza gusobanukirwa iki ni gihamya ko yemera idini he wiped his hands and started to read the bible and i asked myself how can a grown man do this then i remembered this is a witness that shows that he believes in his religion nibu kigira isoni zo kubwira abantu batakuzi kukijijwe tagicaniro cy'umuhamya kiri muri wowe if you are still ashamed to tell people that you are saved there is no auto of witness within you hari kintu nakundiraga bakenya there is one thing that i love kenya Africa. more than other africans they will greet you ninaitwa mbogo nimeokoka na mupenda yesu ningali na okoka my name is bogo ngo nye ndakijwe kandi nkunda yesu akura mukije muhuriye munzira uko ni ko abakenya bakora sinzi ko bakibikorupa they will greet you and say my name is bogo i am saved and i love jesus that's the first thing they will tell you when they greet you my name is wairimu nina mupenda yesu ningali na okoka Yesu ni bwana na mukozi wa maisha yangu. Aho muhagazaho. They will say my, my name is so and so and I love Jesus, he's my savior. As you are standing there. Kura. Ubu Kristo bwayo mu mutima noneho ubushire hanze kakakabuye ko mu mazi. Take your salvation out of your heart and reveal it as the tip of the iceberg. Turi tabaza. We are a light. Tiri basha kuzi. It cannot be Buhi turned off. It cannot be hidden under turumusozi. Turumudugudu kumusozi. We are a city on a high hill. We cannot be hidden. Uzihishirahe kire tuzagwe. You will hide you will not hide until you fall. Warakijishwe. You were saved. Show people. Utunyanga nyanga duto duto tureke. Ibyo si byo abantu bakijishwe. The small games and corners leave them behind because they don't belong to save people. Utuntu to kubesha besha gupfundika pfundika ugira ngo abantu tuyeri ngo abantu nibarimo bakubona tureke. The lies and the games that you are trying to do hiding from people leave them behind. Kwirukanga inyuma y'abakobwa n'abahungu bireke. Running behind young men and young women. Look for your own and then move on. Kane ni butamushatse guma gutyo. And if you don't want one to remain the same. Stop harassing people in the middle of the night with messages in, in early in the morning. Sleep. Sleep is very important. In the morning you are always sending messages. Why don't you talk to me? Do you give that person money? Leave people alone. Maramaza. Commit. Are you ready to maramaza? Are you ready to commit? Uriteguye kumaramaza. Are you ready to commit? Ubu Kristo ni bwiza. Uzi impamvu ari bwiza. Tacho uyagiriza mu mutima. Christianity is good because you don't accuse yourself of anything. If you're authentic. If you're authentic. Are you authentic? authentic? Stand up and let's pray. Let's give up. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, tuzamura maboko yacu. Let us raise our hands. Umvicha tumye mpinduka nitkumu kunzi. Uimana 
Nirimbabazi Datawa Watwe Umvicha tumye mpinduka Umvicha Tumye mpinduka Kitumu Umuku Uzi Uimana Aleluya Nirimbabazi Datawa Datawa If you feel in your heart that you want to build an altar of witness, raise your hand and let's pray to God. Lord Jesus, in your name, we bring your children, God. It is an altar that must be built in their lives. The other people will see and see that they are saved. The other people will see and see that they are children of God. In the name of Jesus, all the weakness, all the habits, we bring them down in their lives. The thirst of the world and the things of the world, the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, we remove them from their lives in the name of Jesus. May the art of, uh, art of witness be built. May people be able to see it. Their fellowship with you. Thank you, God, that you are doing good. And that you are building this altar. Many years ahead. Many times ahead. Even the times you are in. People will know well. That we belong to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Go back with the Lord Jesus. See you. Zinari Yoshe, 
你温习啊。Abajene mo sigare mo fashe, abajene mo sigare mo fashe hano kumzuma, abajene mo dafuti cho 